what is intelligence? As an AI researcher, I grapple with this question every single day. What do we mean when we say artificial intelligence? The artificial part is pretty obvious, but what about the intelligence part? Most of us assume we are replacing ourselves with AI, the way that we think with computer programs. But AI doesn't have to be mirrored on human intelligence. In fact, I believe it is better if we don't. In my work, I'm inspired from complex patterns in nature that leads to intelligence to develop algorithms. And that's why I'd like to call the AI that I advocate for nature-inspired digital intelligence. Why? Because I believe Mother Nature provides us with unlimited solutions for a wide range of problems. And if you think about it, these solutions are extremely efficient. By their very nature, they are scalable and adaptable to changing condition and grounded in sustainable principles. So it's wise for us to rely on these natural principles before tapping to our own solution to problems. But drawing inspiration from nature is not new. It's, it's, it's a concept known as biomimicry and bioinspiration that is quite often used in the design and science research. But I believe it provides unlimited possibilities to computer science, and in particular, AI. My own fascination with these natural principles started at a very young age. As a kid, I spent days of my childhood running around our garden, and I was always fascinated by the natural world around me. I spent hours and hours laying on the grass in our backyard and observed the behavior of ants, bees, and other insects. And I would perform what I'd like to call scientific experiments, like living treats, and see how these cute, tiny ants gradually and quietly follow one another to create an ant trail. I even once started a small fire to see what an ant fire department looks like in action. <laughs> Nature has taken billions of years to perfect solutions to a wide range of problems. And if you think about it, Nature doesn't just think in one way. It doesn't always think like us. And that is the sort of intelligence I am talking about. By studying and mimicking nature, like the hunting of wolves, the marching of ants, or the falcon of birds, I believe we'll find solutions to some of our most challenging problems in a whole new way, through new eyes and through different lenses. Sounds easy, but it turns out that it's much harder to put ants into the computer than simply feeding them into the hard drive. In fact, it was not until I was at a university as a postgraduate researcher that I figured this out. Not in our lab, no, but like other great bio-inspired works by observing nature through a movie screen. It was one day I was laying on a couch and came across this random movie called The Grey. There is a critical scene in which Liam Neeson, the main actor, is being chased by a group of wolves. The camera pans out to a bird eye view, something like this. As the wolf pack circles around him, you see how they use their collective intelligence to find, chase, and finally capture the prey? Wolves are amongst the most organized hunting creatures out there. They constantly search their surroundings to find food and ensure their survival. And that's why I'd like to call them the bear search agent, because they can pretty much search any sort of landscape. And that hit me. I thought, hmm, what if I could create an algorithm this way? The first step I took was to better understand the main principles of their behaviors, which are decision-making, hunting, and navigation. I started by developing mathematical model for these using data collected by observing wolves or via sensors. Then, I turned those models into a series of processes and steps that could be represented computationally, and that finally led to the development of an optimization algorithm called the Grave of Optimizer. And that gave me superpower because I was able to deploy my digital wolves to different missions and help a lot of people to solve a wide range of optimization problems. Unlike the traditional algorithms that heavily rely on predefined rules, this wolf-inspired algorithm allows AI to dynamically adapt based on the interaction of those wolves with the problem. 
Now imagine if you are an engineer trying to optimize an energy system on a power grid. The existing human-made solutions might be biased and quite limited to our perception of the world. What if you could use a nature-inspired algorithm instead? So let's summon our digital wolves. Imagine the city's power grid is a landscape that the wolves need to navigate. Each wolf can represent a different source of energy, like solar, battery, or wind. And let's say the prey is to meet the city's energy demand in the most cost-effective and sustainable way. The wolves start the hunt by exploring the combination of those energy sources and their capacities. For example, during a sunny day, the solar wind might take the lead, while at cloudy day or at night, the wind wolf or battery wolf might step forward. The algorithm is constantly evaluating the performance of those digital wolves and adapting the PAX strategy over time. And this iterative hunt process will allow us to find an optimal mix of energy sources and battery size to store excess energy, improve efficiency, reduce costs, and even promote sustainability. You see, by teaching our digital tools to think and solve problems like nature does, it evolves how we advance and changes how we solve problems. After developing the Grave of Optimizer, I recalled my childhood observation of ants and the fact that they could always find, annoyingly, they could always find a food source wherever I put them, and despite all my hard work to stop them. And I wonder again, hmm, could I then try an AI to think like ant? Finding an optimal path from a food source to a nest by ants is quite similar to a lot of logistic problems that we deal with as humans. Inspired by this, we can develop an ant-inspired algorithm that releases digital ants on the graph, representing a city, for example. It, they, they leave moxen, some sort of perfume on optimal pathways. Now, let's assume we teach them to sometimes choose a path randomly, but most of the time choose the path that, that's been already marked by other ants. As we deploy more and more and over time, they will be able to explore the graph of any size as extensively and find an optimal route in the end. These are only two examples of nature's ingenious design. From micro to microscopic, nature-inspired digital intelligence offers endless possibilities. But don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to say all our problems can be solved by looking into nature, nor implying that everything in nature offers, offers a solution to our problems. However, most of the problem-solving mechanisms that we employ are inefficient and quite time-consuming. So it's much, much wiser for us to first tend to nature to get insight and then use AI to bridge these gaps. And that's not all. The power of AI in doing this allows us to go even one step further. AI allows not to simply imitate nature, but to accelerate and supercharge evolutionary processes. This is because AI can process a vast amount of data and explore possibility much beyond humans, all of us combined, or even nature's capability. So if we leverage on it, we'll end up with problem-solving techniques that are easier, more reliable, more accurate, and even more sustainable. That's why I strongly believe that we must not narrow the conversation of the future of intelligence to human only. The age of AI doesn't mark the downfall of humanity. It is the continuation of the same narrative of evolution that's been unfolding for billions of years. Intelligence has always been expansive, and Mother Nature is continuously inspiring us. Where we are now is we have the ability to merge our evolutionary learning with our human-made cutting-edge tools to create the next chapter of nature-inspired digital intelligence. And remember, if you're looking for the next breakthrough, it may just be waiting for you in your backyard.